I sugared them up and then they get to go home. There's never been a time to where I've ever heard any grandparent ever say that their grandchildren's not the best. Your grandchildren's the best, and yours is the best, and yours is the best, right? Debbie, yours is the best, right? Harry, but yours is the best, right? That's right. But there you go. Back and forth. I saw that. <laughs> Mother's Day is important. But one of the things of being a pastor for over 19 years now is um, Mother's Day is important. But however, there's not just moms here on Mother's Day. And so when you do a Mother's Day sermon, which is very appropriate for those that are doing that today, that is ever appropriate, but you tend to ignore the other over half of the percent of people that are here that aren't moms. And so one of the things I do is I bring a son for all of us because we all need God, amen? We all need that blessing. We all need that reminder. We all need that refreshing. And today there's nothing in the Scripture that doesn't say it's not for all of us. Because the last time I checked, every word that's written in the Holy Book is for all of us. Every one of us can be changed. Every one of us can be renewed. Every one of us has something that we brought here this morning. And I'm not just talking about your family. And I'm not just talking about your friends. We all brought something here this morning. Some of it's good stuff. Some of it's bad stuff. Some of it's stuff that you don't even know if it's good or bad. You ever have that stuff in your life you're just like, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. But there's a junior high science teacher, and he lectured on the properties of magnets for the entire class. The next day, he gave his students a quiz. And the first question read like this. My name begins with an M, and it has six letters. It picks things up. What am I? Over half the class wrote mother. Half a class wrote mother. That reminds me of the father who was trying to explain the concept of marriage to his four-year-old daughter. And he got out the wedding emblem thinking visual images would help out. And he explained that the entire wedding service to her. When he finished, he asked if she had any questions. And she pointed to the picture of the wedding party and asked, Dad, is that when mommy came to work for us? <laughs> Think about it. There's an old saying out there that goes, if daddy ain't happy, who cares? But if mom ain't happy, nobody's happy. Right? And I'm sure for your case, that's true, isn't it? Just as like, uh-huh. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson said that um, mothers are important. And we should remember that mothers are important, and I think they are. And I'm not given any stress or less stress that they're not by not having a sermon that deals just with moms today. But I really think that God is important to all of us. We all need God. We all need something from God this morning. And if you are a mother here today, I know that some of you, it's a difficult time for you. Maybe you wanted to be a mother, but you can't for some reason. Perhaps some of you have not had the best mother in the world. Some has had a mother that has died. Or maybe even you have children that have preceded you to death. Some of you must feel pain of a wayward child this morning. And some of you are flying solo as you work hard to nurture your child's faith. So I want to say thank you to all moms. Keep keeping on. Keep believing in God. Keep trusting in God and letting Him be the Lord of your salvation. Let Him be the one that leads. Let Him be the one that directs. Let Him be the one that comforts you when no one else can. So happy Mother's Day. But also, I want to remind us from John chapter 10, verse 22 is where our scripture is going to come this morning. Some of you are like, well, wait a minute, this is, this is before Jesus, and aren't we still in Easter, and aren't we after the resurrection, and yeah, we are. That's where we're at, we're still in Easter season, still preparing for Pentecost. 
But sometimes we need to go back so that we can go forward. Right? Sometimes you have to take two steps back before you can take three steps forward. Sometimes we have to be able to hear, to see, to have it shaped for us. And so here's what the passage says in John chapter 10, beginning in verse 22 from the NIV. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade, and the Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you didn't believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my hand. And the Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Father God, I pray that you just bless us this morning. That we'll open our ears. We'll open our eyes. We'll open our hearts to you. We pray for you to direct us. In your name we pray. Amen. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? Are you Christ? Christ says, I did tell you. I did tell you. Not only did I tell you, but I tried to show you. And you still didn't get it. Church, that's not an old problem. That's not an old problem. There are still people today that are saying, Jesus, show me that you're Lord. Jesus, show me your strength. Jesus, show me your power. Jesus, you're not, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing you. And Jesus is saying the same thing now that he said back then. You're not listening. You're not hearing. You're not seeing. I've been trying to show you. But the biggest problem, he says, is this. You're not my sheep. Because if you were my sheep, if you were my sheep, you'd hear me. If you were my sheep, then you'd be listening. You'd follow. And you'd go where I go. you do what I do. It's funny. It's about a month or two after we'd gotten here. And I was up on the ridge, and as I was up on the ridge, uh, Sandy uh, said, I'm so thankful for you, for you Pastor, that, uh, that, that you're a country boy. And I just started laughing. I said, what in the world makes you think that there's any country in me whatsoever? I don't even listen to country music. I don't even like it. Sorry, I don't. I did, you all knew where I grew up, right? Greenfield, Tennessee. Home country music is kind of shoved, right? Here it is. Like it, leave it, love it, whatever. I think that's a song. <laughs> but there's nothing about me that just screams out, country boy. So when she said that, she says, I said, Sandy, I said, what is it that actually makes me a country boy? She says, well, you understand country people. I said, well, there, there we go. I said, we can deal with that. I said, we can deal with it. Yes, I understand country people. I've been in a country town. I understand that. But for me to be a country boy, no. That's like calling a truck a Ferrari. It ain't, it ain't happening. An orange and apple. They're different. And I remember some times, and, and I can remember, uh, I, I used to have friends. I still have friends. Sorry. That's <laughs> Off to a bad start this morning. Let's start over. Hi, my name's Chad. <laughs> but as I think about it, and I was with some of my country friends, there we go, that's better, isn't it? I was out in the field one time, and all of a sudden, I saw this big cow. He was looking at me, and I was looking at him, and we were budging. <laughs> at one point, I was like, I don't think you have good intentions. And then my friend behind me immediately goes, whatever country people say, 
speak. And the cow immediately just did what he said. I was like, well, this makes me feel real comfortable. Cow's listening. So I start to, and the cow just looks at me. <laughs> nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Reminds me of the story of there were some Palestinians and they were, this guy was really enamored about how the sheep listened. And, and all the sheep, all the sheep, if you didn't know, there was three different shepherds and all the sheep were gathered together. And then when they were leaving, one one goes, yip, yip, and, and all the sheep follow him and go. And then, I mean, they were all together. But as soon as that one shepherd said, yip, yip, his sheep, they get out of the pile and they go and follow him. The next one does the same thing. Yip, yip. His sheep start to follow him. It's almost like they had a call. They knew. But they knew. You get one son, try to follow me. Help me. Try to follow me. So finally the guy's looking around. He says, Oh, I'm going to try this. He says, This is really cool. He says, I'm going to try this. So he puts the, the shepherd's gear on and he goes, Yip, yip. And the sheep just stay there. Yip, yip. Yip, yip. Finally, at that point, he's gave up, going, not a word, didn't even move. There's something to this scripture. Jesus, we want you to move. Jesus, we want you to do this. I have. And the reason you're not hearing is because you're not one of my sheep. The reason you're going to understand is because you're not one of my sheep. Because my sheep move when I move. They go when I go. When I call them, they go. Jesus basically says there are two prime characteristics that make up a sheep. One, they hear his voice. Two, they follow him. And he says to them, you guys aren't doing any of this. You see, according to this verse, Christianity goes way more more than acknowledging who Jesus is. The scripture tells us that even the demons believe and they shudder when they hear his name. Yes, the scripture depicts Jesus' sheep as people who are listening for him and following him. Trouble in the world is we don't listen and follow Jesus. We listen to everything else, but we don't listen to Jesus. So my question is today, are you listening to Jesus? Do you sit and wait to hear Him? Has Jesus ever spoken to you? Can you possibly say that you are one of those that God is speaking to me today? And maybe you're sitting there saying, I've never heard His voice. The sad thing it is, is there's a bunch of people, maybe you don't want to admit it or not, but there's a lot of people sitting here this morning saying, I've never heard his voice. I don't know who Jesus is. I think Jesus is a good person. I know he saves and I know he sanctifies, but I'm not one of his sheep. And you know what? You know what? That's on you. That's on you. Because Jesus has done his part. He saves, he sanctifies, he redeems, he's healed. He showed, he set the example, he's lived it. And so, just like the Pharisees, just like the Sadducees, just like these people right here, Jesus, do something I already have. I already have. It's up to you. Oh, well, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I want to be a better person. And I've had people tell me, you know how many people that I've had sit down right at the front or in the office, wherever it is, Pastor, I want to be a better, a better person. How do I get to have Jesus in my life? You listen, and you surrender. You can't follow Jesus when you say, I want to hold on to something. Oh, well, I really want to do it. Well, if you do, then you'll do it. Because I know when people really want to do something, they go out of their way to get it done. Amen. Right? So if you really want to follow Jesus, then you'll be doing it. 
And my question is, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Are you waiting for, oh, oh, I know, I know. I know. We're waiting for everybody else to start doing it. And then I'll go ahead and do it. Doesn't work out so well, does it? I can remember a group of my friends, they were, oh man, I'm telling you what. They were running and they were jumping into the lake and, and they jumped off of this cliff and, and they were getting really far out there. But guess what? All of them, they were about six foot two, six foot three, six foot one, about 195 pounds, 200 pounds. I was six foot three, 300 pounds. I'm not going to jump as far as they do, as easily. So here comes Chad. Everybody else is going to make it, so can I. Oh, wait a minute. There's a rock there. I didn't clear the rock. My toe knew I didn't clear the rock. Just because everybody else is doing it. But you shouldn't have to wait on everybody else to do something for you to start doing something. Hmm. Sadly, there are many of us who call ourselves children of God who are expecting to enter heaven that never take time or even consider listening to God. We just go through life on a whim. We go through saying, yes, I believe in Jesus. I go to church, but I never listen. I wonder if it's because we aren't going to live what he's going, we're not going to like what he's going to say, so that's the reason we don't do it. And, and maybe another reason is because we just don't want to give things up. I've known people that have just sat there, and they've just sat there, and they've just sat there, and look at each other, and no movement whatsoever. I've known people literally pulling each other's hair just because the other one wouldn't give up. So they're going to keep pulling. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've only seen other people do things that's just like... Let me ask you a question today. Can we get real? Right? Can we get real? I don't think everybody's convinced. <laughs> Can we get real this morning? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what is so important right now that you're holding on to that you're willing to risk eternity? Because that's really what it boils down to. <laughs> Eternal life. Eternal is not two years. It's not three years. It's not 50. It's not 75. It's not 5,280. It's eternal. It's forever. It's infinity. It keeps going. So let me ask you a question. What is so important in your life right now? What is so important in your life right now that you're willing to risk eternity? Because that's exactly what you're doing if you're not listening to Jesus. Because if you're not listening to Jesus, and yes, I will say it this morning. Get ready. If you're not following Jesus this morning, you're on a highway to hell. Amen. Plain and simple. There's heaven, there's hell. You're going to one or two places. And the devil can't make you do anything. Amen. You choose to do it. You choose to listen. You choose not to listen. Well, let's go back to sheep. Sheep. And, and maybe, maybe we don't like this because sheep aren't necessarily the smartest animals in the world. Well, guess what? Have you looked at humans lately? I mean, have you seen some of the dumb things humans do? Really? No wonder we're compared to sheep. No wonder. And if you're getting offended by that, I'm sorry this morning, but we do some dumb things. Maybe you haven't done some dumb things, but I've done some dumb things. Whatever makes, whatever makes sense that this body should be trying to jump on one of those small trampolines. You know the exercise ones? What makes it think that this body 
is ever going to run, jump on that thing that the thing's going to say stationary. We do some dumb things. Right? I'm sure I'm not the only person who's ever done a dumb thing. And one of the other things is, is guess what, church? We're living politically correct instead of biblically correct. And it's time we can't plan for correctness out the door where it belongs because it doesn't belong in the church. It does not belong in the church. We go by God, God's Word, the Holy Bible, the Holy Trinity. And if God's Word is for it, then who can stand against it? And His Word will not return void. Amen? Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time we start speaking biblically correct and start worrying about whether we're going to offend somebody and worry about whether or not their soul's going to hell. Amen. Mom, it's time, dads, it's time for us to get our ears on and listen to Jesus. He will, he's talking, he's sharing, he's, he's listening. But sheep, they do, they go out, they, they, they wander, and you know what happens? A good shepherd knows that if a sheep gets on an embankment, okay, and they're on the embankment, and I mean they're, they're calling out, wah, 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 help me, help me, wah, wah, wah. Did you know the shepherd, a really good shepherd, he waits until they're completely quiet, until they're completely worn out, and then he goes and he saves them. Why? Because he knows that if they're still squirming, <laughs> that it's more dangerous to not only them, but himself, if he tries to rescue them. Sometimes, we're sitting there, wah, 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 Lord, aren't you doing something? And he's waiting for us to give up and say, okay, Lord, I'm finally done, and I'm going to listen to you. And I'm going to let you take control. Because if you're flailing around, you're doing more harm to not only yourself, but to if somebody tries to rescue you. So the first thing we need to do is we need to listen. We need to listen. And not only do we need to listen to Jesus, we need to follow him. We need to trust Him. We need to go where He goes. We need to do what He does. We need to say what He says. We need to listen when it's time to listen. We need to act when it's time to act. And church, if there's ever a time it's time to act, it's now. Amen. It's time to say, hey, guess what? That's wrong. And it's not wrong just because it's my opinion. It's not just wrong because I, I don't want to do it. It's wrong because God says it's wrong. Because the Bible says that it's wrong. That's why it's wrong. But you know what? I know this about God. I know that God still loved us so much. And while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. And how do I know that? Because guess what? There were three people on the hill that day. And I know for a fact, I'm going to see two of them in heaven. Two of them. Well, why aren't we going to see three? Because the other one had the opportunity and he let it go. Church, there is every opportunity for us in the world to follow and to listen to Jesus. But we'd rather listen to we'd rather listen to Oprah. We'd rather listen to Twitter, Instagram, whatever. You know what I know about Twitter? There's these little things called tweets. That's what Tweety Bird does. That's as far as I know about Twitter. But I know it can get a whole lot of people in a whole lot of trouble. Did you know? Maybe you didn't know this. 
Did you know that the federal government has every tweet you've ever tweeted? Every tweet you've ever tweeted or not tweeted, it has. Some of you were like, oh, oh, uh, really? Yeah, really. Every tweet you've ever tweeted, they have it. Oh, let me, let me, let me give you another one. Every time you've clicked, every time you've clicked on a page, there's record of that too. Uh oh. Wait a minute, whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Hold on! Yeah. Herm Edwards was a football coach. He has a famous saying that he says, he says, uh, don't click send. You can write whatever you want, but don't click send. <laughs> Have you ever written something and then I mean, it might have been one of it might have been a good one. And you're cool. You were really mad at this friend. And boy, they said all these things about you. And then all of a sudden you accidentally put sin. Guess what? You can't get it back. Let me see. Who's in here this morning? Cleo. Where's he at? There you are. Let me ask you a question. You brush your teeth? Right? Hopefully. Brother saying no. Mom saying I hope so. If you squeeze all the toothpaste out, can you get it back in? No. You can't. You can't. It's the same thing. Guys, let's listen and follow Jesus. He's one to lead. He's one to direct. He's one to show. And let me ask you a question. If you're not following Jesus today, if you're not listening to Jesus today, what are you waiting on? What, what are you waiting on? Are you waiting for an invitation? Okay, here's the invitation. Jesus wants you to listen. Here it is right now today. Jesus Christ wants you to listen to what He says because He paid the price so that you wouldn't have to go to hell. There's the invitation. There it is. You've been invited. You've been invited. There's the invitation. Oh, well, you know what? I can, I can do that tomorrow. I can, I can do that tomorrow. I, I can put, I got so much other stuff to do. I, I can get to that tomorrow. You know how many funerals I've done with people thinking ahead tomorrow? You want to ask me? You don't know how many funerals I've done thinking they have tomorrow? All of them. You know how many funerals I've done where the people, they come and they say, do you know whether or not they've made a commitment for the Lord? And you know how many of them said, I hope so. I'm sorry. But I don't want hope so. I don't want to be waiting on hope so for me to spend eternity. Because you don't have to hope so. You can know so, and you can know it today, and it's as simple as ABC, admit, believe, and confess. I, I'm making it simple today, guys. Kindergartners can get this. Four-year-olds can get this. A, B, C, admit, believe, confess. It's that simple. It's even more simple than this. Jesus heard me this morning. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him be one. They are weak. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. You get it? You get it? Oh, 
There's more than the scripture though. There's more. It's not just listen. It's not just you haven't heard. Did you get the rest of it? The rest of it says, you can't even grasp them out of my hands. <laughs> once I've got a hold of them, once I've got a hold of them, you can't even snatch them out. You try to take, you try to take a child from their mother. You ain't going down without being hurt. Have you seen a mother bear? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but have you seen? Seriously. You're going to get hurt. Jesus isn't letting you go to that fight. He's not letting you go. Jesus isn't the one letting go. And I want us to grab a hold of that. Jesus isn't one letting go. But sometimes... Sometimes as hard as you hold, you get that story going on, and eventually the child goes running. Jesus didn't let go. You're the one who formed your way out. Jesus isn't going to let go of you, but I'm telling you, you can squirm and you can get, trust me, no matter how old you hold on, you can squirm and, and palms get sweaty and eventually you let go. It wasn't you letting go. Jesus didn't let go. You're the one who did it. Amen. Well, preacher, why is this so important? It's so important because of this. The sheep hear his voice. They listen and they follow. I know for a fact that Jesus Christ is calling this morning. I know for a fact that Jesus Christ is speaking to us. I know for a fact that he's not going to let go. I know for a fact that he's holding on to us, that he wants to lead us, that he wants to direct us, that salvation is here, that salvation is available, that sanctification is available, that broken relationships can be put back together. That forgiveness can happen. But you've got to let go. And you've got to listen. And you've got to follow Jesus. I totally believe it. I totally believe it. I believe there's nobody here that's ever went too far away from Jesus that Jesus can't say right now, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. You're forgiven no matter what, no matter what it is, no matter what you've done. I love you. I love you so much that I knew what you did. And I still went to the cross for you. Whatever it is. I know what you did. I know what you're doing. And I still went. I still went. Because God my Father loved you that much. And I love you that much. And the Holy Spirit loves you that much. Church, are we listening? Are we listening? Let me put it this way. Crazy cooter, got your ears on? Dukes of Hazard. Got your ears on? Are you listening? Anybody there? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, let me go back a little further. Hold on. Guess what? With Jesus, you call and you talk to Jesus, you're not going to hear one of these fun things. Anybody know what that is? signal. Or you're not going to hear a message that says, this person does not have a voicemail that has been set up. <laughs> not going to hear that. Or you're not going to hear, please leave your name at the message. If you would like to speak to this person, press 1. If you'd like to speak to this person, press 2. If you'd like to wait 5 years, press 3. <laughs> you get it? If you're really listening and talking to Jesus and you want to do it, 
there's not going to be a waiting city. So, we've heard. We've heard. We've listened. Now what, preacher? We've heard. We've listened. Now there's time for application. We apply what we have heard. We use what we have been given. My prayer is that you're listening to God's word. There's a whole lot of other stuff out there. But God's trying to speak. God's trying to save. God's trying to sanctify. God's trying to set you on the right track. Did you know there's only one constant in this world today? His name is Jesus. He'll never leave. He'll never fail. He'll never forsake. Because guess what? If you're trying to trust your faith, if you're trying to trust your faith on friends and family, I'm sorry to tell you, they will fail. Some of you might even be here this morning and say, well, I'm trusting it on my health. Well, guess what? That's going to go away, too. Some of you say, oh, well, guess what? I, hey, 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 I don't have it all well there, but you know what? Woo-hoo! I'm in the money. Guess what? Banks do foreclose. Stock markets do crash. Computer viruses do happen. Hackers are real. <laughs> and just because today it says you have a lot of zeros, tomorrow you might not have any at all. So don't put your faith in your bank account, in your friends. Don't put it in your health. <laughs> don't put it in your health. Put it in one thing that's constant. God. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this moment that we can share together. And now, Father God, I pray that you just be with each and every one of us. That you guide us, that you direct us. Lord, that we will listen as you are speaking. And now, Father God, I pray that, Lord, you'll be with those right now that you're talking to. Lord, I know. Lord, I, I know for a fact, Lord, that you are speaking today. And I pray, Lord, that we just listen and hear your voice. And that as we listen, we'll follow. Now, Father God, have your way in the rest of this service. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you just stand with me? Keep your eyes closed. Don't, don't look around. I, I know, I know some, I, I know we got Mother's Day. I understand that. But you know what? I understand that eternity lasts forever. And I know God speaks. Would you just slip out? Just slip out this morning. God, God's speaking to you in any way. Maybe you don't even know if it's God. Just come. You've had something go on this week. You've had something happen. You, you just, just come. Maybe, maybe you're saying, I've never heard God's voice. And it's time for me to listen. Just come. Just come.